I might be stating the obvious with this one, but the longer you expose your sensor, the better the image. Or so it would seem. In fact, going over a set amount of time is not always the best way to image the night sky. Before we dive headfirst into the hard part, let's understand what is happening when you're exposing the camera. All images are built up of photons striking the sensor. The photon is converted into an electrical signal, which is then sent out to its destination, ultimately your screen. The problem is, when we examine the histogram, everything is to the far left. In short, this basically means that an image is underexposed and that we need more light, right? Well, truth be told, we simply don't have more light. We can't exactly fire a flash and wait for it to return, after all, if the object in question is 1AU away, we would have to wait a little over 16 minutes for the light to bounce off the object and come back to us, assuming the light itself isn't diminished. So the obvious answer is to increase exposure time to move the histogram off of the left. Again, not so fast. Another trick a lot of astrophotographers do is to increase the gain or ISO of the camera. I state this clearly, we did not increase the sensitivity. By increasing the gain or ISO, we amplify the signal in order to get the histogram to move. Not only does it move away from the left, but it also stretches the graph outwards. There is however a trade-off. The amplification of the signal also increases the noise and in higher settings adds in more noise that wasn't there before. The biggest question has always been, where do we set this number? For users of dedicated astronomy cameras, the phrase of unity gain is often heard but misunderstood. Unity gain is when the signal from the input and output is the same level. A simple way of explaining this is, one car goes into the tunnel, one car exits. If we increase the gain, then two cars will pop out of the other end. The idea of unity gain on a camera is to achieve a result that is clean and not to introduce artificial noise. Ultimately, this works in your favor when doing post-processing. So should we set the camera to unity gain when imaging? Oddly enough, no. Each object we are looking at reacts differently. Setting one gain level for all objects will result in varying areas blowing out on one target and underexposing on another. Let's get this clear before we start. Focal ratio is not the same as aperture. Aperture for telescopes is measured by the size of the main objective, whereas focal ratio is a measurement of how the optics concentrates light. Having telescopes with lower focal ratios, or F number, results in less time to expose since more light is now concentrated onto one pixel. Again, there are interesting trade-offs that result in faster telescopes. The biggest being focusing becoming a lot harder. Those in the photographic world know this effect as depth of field and hitting focus can be tricky given that the target we generally are looking at is tiny. Another trade-off to consider is focal length is greatly reduced the faster the F number is. One last point, the amount of light can easily oversaturate the pixel resulting in large blooming stars and loss of details. Imagine building a wall out of bricks. Each time we place a brick on top of the other one below it, the wall slowly builds up height over time. Now imagine doing the same thing with your images. As we stack each image on top, the image is given the illusion that it becomes brighter. Stacking an image, for a lack of better description, does not make the image brighter. What it really does is it sorts out what is signal and what is noise. Over a set of images, if a pixel returns the same value, then the final pixel produced will have that value. If the value is different over the data depending on the algorithm, the value of the pixel is average to produce a final image. Take a look at this image. From far away, both squares appear to be the same shades of grey. But when I zoom into it, suddenly, the illusion is lost, and the square on the left is actually created from black pixels and white pixels. How this relates to stacking is the white pixels represents data, and the black pixels represents missing data. As we stack, the gaps are filled in to create an image that is more signal than noise, noise being the missing data. The more images you stack, the clearer the image becomes. However, 
don't confuse this as the image becoming brighter. Exposing the sensor to light and figuring out how long to go for is often a question that is raised. Since most people don't have the patience to sit around waiting, they employ the stacking method to believe that 10 6 second exposures is the same as 1 60 second exposure. That simply is not true. The longer we expose the sensor, the more chance of a photon strike. If you do not see anything from a single exposure, the chances are that by stretching the histogram to the extreme will result in a very pale grey box, with little to no detail of what it is that you are taking a picture of. The more you expose, the more data you collect. In order to get a good image, you have to consider all of the above. Knowing the type of target that you are shooting will help determine the best course of action when it comes to settings. Every camera reacts differently to exposure, so finding the right point, much like Unity Gain, is something you need to look into. You might have heard the phrase quantum efficiency. The higher this number, the better. But don't get hung up on this number, as it's only a reference point as to how long you need to expose. If your quantum efficiency is lower than your friend's camera, simply expose longer. You have to experiment with your setup. The Orion Nebula easily blows out compared to the Eagle, which requires longer exposures to achieve the same results. Each astronomical object has its own defined surface brightness that will help you determine what exposure lengths you are aiming for. In some cases, too much light is a bad thing, and we utilize different settings to suit your desired situation. The important part is to know your setup. It's not often that you come across someone with identical setups, and even if you do, the location of where they are will be different, not including nightly seeing conditions. The key part is not to be stuck with one size fits all, but to try different settings that suit your situation. Don't expect high detail close-ups of images of your favorite nebula with a fast, short focal length scope. There is a bigger picture. It's just down to you how small you want it.